Tony, I want to have a fun debate with you because I think Canon cameras will continue to be the number one camera brand for the foreseeable future. You're wrong and there's nothing fun about that. <laughs> no, Sony's been number one and oh. they're going to be number one. They were, Sony was number one. Do you care to narrow it, that down? In, in full, innovation. In full in frame. full frame mirrorless. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think that just like overall Canon's number one and will continue to reign supreme. Overall. And I've got my argument lined up, but first I want to make another suggestion to you, Tony. I think that you need your own portfolio where you can put your best pictures. I have that, Charles. Where do you have that? At NorthropPhotography.com. And, and that's how you do a plug, folks. <laughs> Okay. You tricked me. <laughs> no, we both have Squarespace websites and we enjoy them so much. They're so simple to set one up. You can just drag and drop and make it happen. And in fact, I tried to make a website using some other platform and uh, it was so complicated I never finished it. But with Squarespace, I have made three websites. It's that easy and it looks professional. So don't risk people seeing your latest not so great photos on social media. Make sure you consolidate all of your best work onto your website so that you can look professional. They even have a place where you can sell your prints. So if someone's ever come up to you and said, hey, I loved your picture of that bleh on your website. Can I buy a print? You can send them the address. They can buy it there. It will take their credit card. It's easy to do. So set up your own Squarespace for free with a 14-day free trial. Go to the description down below. It's squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. Thanks, Should I Squarespace. spell my name every time? <laughs> All the time? Okay, as far as overall camera sales go, it's actually first place Canon. They still sell more and they have been number one since the 80s. Second place is now Sony. It used to be Nikon, but Sony pushed past Nikon and they're kind of leaving them in the dust. So now the big debate that used to be Canon versus Nikon is Canon versus Sony. Yeah, I think that that's pretty interesting. What, there's so many interesting things that go into how Sony displaced Nikon. Maybe we can talk about that another day. So in researching my argument, Tony, I always go to Google Trends, which is not like bond-proof research because you have to try to think of the search terms that people are going to be using. Yeah, that are going to return the results you're looking for. I use several. I tried to be unbiased, okay? okay? Even though I'm arguing with you and I want to win, I tried to be unbiased. And I searched Canon cameras and Sony cameras. And if you look at the trend from the year 2004, you can see that there was this wider divide in searches. P way more people were searching for Canon cameras um, and then Sony cameras second. Now, you can see as time goes on that Sony is closing that gap. Oh, yeah. But they've never passed Canon in searches. People are still searching for Canon cameras more often. And it seems to have leveled off. It's not gradually getting closer. It seems to have just plateaued. And Canon is number one and Sony is number two. And so I think we can wrap up this podcast. I'm I, correct. I think the reason that Sony is closing in on camera is that the Canon buyers are simply uh, getting very old and they're going to retirement homes and they no longer need cameras. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you say such a thing? They have fond memories of Andre Agassi advertisements, him playing tennis, and they're like, oh, I do want a Canon Rebel and a nice mullet. <laughs> that's, that's the segment that you're talking about here. You think they're that's still the, around. You think that's the people searching for <laughs> Canon cameras? They're in a retirement home. That is so offensive. Uh, Sony has closed the gap with Canon by giving consumers what they want, which are just all the features. They come feature-packed. Sony has shown themselves to be the leader in innovation. They were like the first to get real 4K video in an inexpensive camera. Uh, they were, they had eye autofocus long before anybody else. They, they've blown Canon away. Yeah, you know, I'll concede that Sony has really cool innovative ideas. I love that about them, that they take risks. But, it seems to me that Canon always follows up and does a little bit better and is a little more sure with their tech before they release it. I never feel like I'm demoing a beta when I'm using a Canon camera. It works. And I don't have to wait for the next firmware update or the next camera and hope that the tech is, tech is better. By the time they release it, it's functioning for a professional, very young, not in a retirement home photographer like me. <laughs> 
Uh, really? Would you say that about 8K and the Canon R5 on that launch? Well, you know what? Okay, there were overheating problems, but by the time problems. the camera shipped to consumers, that problem had been fixed with a firmware update. Point. I win again. <laughs> you can end this anytime you like, Tony. Okay, we've studied the history of all these camera companies, and one of the most historic moments was the launch of the Sony A9 in, I think, 2017. Because that was really a breakthrough moment when mirrorless cameras first really surpassed DSLRs in capabilities. When we were there at the event, and suddenly this camera could shoot at 20 frames per second, which was unheard of. DSLRs were shooting really practical like 12 frames per second. And it also had no blackout, which just meant that you had a continuous view of the action. It was revolutionary, and they were so far ahead of Canon. I agree. That was an exciting moment. I remember when we got the A9, we were ready to go out and shoot wildlife with that 20 frames per second, the no blackout, we knew we'd be- Silent. It was silent, it was incredible, but what happened when we actually got it home and we started taking wildlife pictures? Because as I recall, we had issues with the buffering, so those 20 frames per second became a little bit frustrating when you had to wait for the camera to actually buffer, and there was so much EVF lag that you couldn't actually track a fast-moving animal. Okay, well, yeah, but they, they addressed that with the Sony A1. It took them a couple of years, but they, they ironed out those kinks. And the Sony A9, it was still like, it was still a good, great camera. It was still like the revolutionary camera. And is that the camera you're using now for wildlife photography? No, I, well, okay, I see your point because we had it and I decided to use the Nikon D850 or a Canon DSLR. Boom! <laughs> Put yourself out of the suffering, Tony Northrop. <laughs> so how are we going to predict what Sony's going to do next, Tony? Because I was thinking about this and I was like, how do we know what Sony's going to do? What will their next move be? I know. Let's just look what Canon's doing because Sony's going to copy it. Because Canon came out with those super fast primes, the F1.2 primes, and Sony came out with them too. And Canon just came out with an F1.2 85mm, so I bet Sony's going to be coming out with one too. Canon was the first to get to the dual pixel autofocus, which was why we loved using Canon cameras to film our videos, because mm -hmm. that autofocus was so great. Sony did it too. Yeah, it, t it took them a couple of years. I mean, sometimes there's give and take, right? Some other company pays the price for the innovation and they determine that the market share is there and then, yeah, other people are gonna learn from that, sure. Yeah, so I'm hoping next Sony comes out with like a tiny 800 millimeter F11 like Canon did. Um, so yeah, I think that Canon's actually leading with the tech that's really popular that people love. Okay, I'll concede that since Canon launched the RF mount, they've come up with some really enticing things. Uh, like the fast F1.2 primes that took Sony a couple of years to start to address. Um, and the animal IAF, like, Canon was only like six months ahead of Sony on having like decent animal IAF. I mean, you talk about Sony innovating with the A9, and I agree the features were exciting, but then Canon came in and countered with the Canon R5, and they had the 20 frames per second um, with no blackout, but also with no lag, Tony it actually was a usable 20 frames per second with a better EVF, okay? Well, yeah, than the A9 from 2017. Yes, but they improved upon it. Not only did they give you the feature, the feature was usable. Then they had 8K video, 45 megapixels, and better image stabilization. So they took all of these points and they made them better. Yeah, okay, but they were like five years late on the sensor stabilization compared to Sony. And they released this camera that, as you pointed out, overheated like crazy. And still, you still struggle with poor battery life, something that Sony tackled several years ago. Canon is still like going through these growing pains. And then what did it take? Six months for Sony to release the Alpha 1, which was very competitive to the R5, offered the 8K, and did so in a package that didn't overheat and didn't struggle with the battery life like the Canon does. I have to give you the point on the battery life because by the time I get halfway through my R5 battery, the autofocus is slower, the frame rate is slower, or the frames per second is slower. So yeah, I got to give you that one. Okay, so you talk about how Canon led in several things, but Sony launched full frame mirrorless 
in 2013. Back when mirrorless was considered just like novelty pocket cameras. They called them bridge cameras at the time. Yeah, but it was the Sony A7. And do you remember what our review was of that camera? How many people did you recommend that camera to? I didn't, I, we didn't, we didn't love the first versions of that. And but we didn't love the first Canon mirrorless full frame either. Okay, and that's okay. Okay, it's a work in progress. In my mind, it came out in 2013, and Sony didn't really have a full frame mirrorless that was as good as a high end DSLR until about 2017, 2018 with the A7 III and the A9. That was when Sony really started to get competitive with those high-end DSLRs. Do you agree? Yeah, I'll agree. Okay, and then Canon wasn't that far behind because it was only like 2018 that they were coming out with the, their full-frame mirrorless. So the lag in the technology isn't that different. It's not as extreme as you would be led to believe if you say they came out with the full frame 2013 first. It's not that extreme if you look at just the camera bodies. Like, okay, Canon was kind of building their mirrorless tech into the live view of the DSLRs and kind of yeah. working the bugs out that way. But by launching a full frame mirrorless platform, Sony began designing their lenses. And now Sony has a full suite of lenses, whereas Canon still has just a handful of lenses. And they're great. They're great. Canon is very good at making lenses, but Sony started out rough with the lenses, but now the new G Master lenses, just as good or better than the Canon lenses. Like they've figured out the optical stuff and they're compact and light and they just work. Sony can also beat Canon in several like key ways, like sensor stabilization really revolutionized both still photography and video. And other people kind of beat Sony in at least the digital era to get to sensor stabilization. Um, but Canon was way behind. Like they didn't get there until 2020, 2020 before they had sensor stabilization. And Canon, Sony was there, and Sony was there early with things like 4K video. Don't bring up the overheating. I don't even want to hear it. And then 20 frames per second and a proper 30 frames per second in the Alpha 1, something nobody else can do like 50% more frames per second than Canon's fastest camera. Okay, so let me go back to the lenses because Sony does have incredible G Master lenses. I love that glass. But Canon also came out with glass just as sharp but more compact, like the new 70 to 200 F2.8 is slightly sharper and it's way smaller than the Sony G Master version. Yeah, that is... Yes. And they're yeah. like, they're coming out with really great glass now that's not only sharp and amazing as you would expect Canon glass to be, but far more compact. And they're coming out with things that are new, like the 800 F11 that is small and light and incredibly sharp. And Sony doesn't even have a competitor to that. Yeah, I, I want to say something snarky. But I honestly good. drool over those lenses, I and mean. I just keep, like, every new Sony lens release, I just think, like, why can't they do that? Like, Sony, Canon is, like, genuinely creative with their lens designs, and they come out with stuff, like, we've never seen before. Yeah, I know. So are you on my side now? <laughs> no, I have more points, but first I want to remind people about our sponsor, Squarespace. You probably need multiple different websites. Like, one website is not enough. You need separate websites for each different aspect of your business. I see some people, they have just one portfolio website and they have their fine art and their landscapes and their like family portraits in there. Yeah, imagine going to hire someone to take photos of your wedding and there's food photos in there too, or like pet photography. You really want to separate it out so it looks like you're fully dedicated to this one type, right? Absolutely. Like expand your business horizontally as a photographer, but create separate brands for yourself so that people finding you think that you're completely focused on this one thing and they aren't distracted by things. Like what if they stumble across some pet photos that they don't like and they decide not to hire you as a wedding photographer? Like yeah. it's all distraction. So go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, set up your first website, then go there again, set up a second website under a different brand. And when you love them, when you have them set up perfect, use the coupon code CHELSEA and you'll save 10% and you'll let Squarespace know that you heard about it through us. And you'll spell my name right. C-H-E-L-S-E-A. <laughs> <laughs> Someone told me that the Chelsea soccer fans would never forget. They would oh, okay. never mess it up. Beyond just the tech. Okay. Okay, they've gone back and forth with the tech that I can agree on. But 
Sony is progressive, like with their marketing and with their social programs. Sony was the first to connect to us and other YouTubers. Back when Canon was still only interested in the print media, Sony was reaching out to uh, YouTubers and bringing us along with the print media because they could kind of predict the future. And they were right. Like those connections have worked out well for them and they've been a key part of their success. They had the sort of influencer and ambassador programs first and that has worked out well for them. And that is going to continue to be a part of their future success. And I think part of this is that Sony is not just a camera manufacturer, but they're like Hollywood. Like they make huge movies, they make music videos. They have these amazing marketing resources where they can host great events for their cameras. They can bring people in and connect with people better than any other camera manufacturer can. And they're willing to leverage that and they continue to do that. Yeah, and my favorite thing is they have the Sony Alpha female program mm -hmm. where they're actually trying to appeal to the other half of the population that's interested in photography. <laughs> So, yeah, I love Sony for that. Yeah, Sony is good that way. I give you that point. Though Canon did reach out and find some really great influencers and make, like, closer bonds with them. Like, I think Peter McKinnon was a great move. And Jessica Kobasi and these people that are young and talented and cool. I thought, I thought they made really good choices on the people that they signed deals with. So yeah, maybe they were it's getting there like three years late, but they're getting there. They're a little late, but I think that they did a good job, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that also Canon understands photographers and videographers. Like they have this really deep history with professional photographers and they understand what they want. Um, and you can tell by the way that the cameras are constructed and the features work that they know how those features are going to be implemented in the field. And sometimes with Sony, I feel a bit of a disconnect. Like we were talking about how they had 20 frames per second on the A9, mm -hmm. but then there was um, so much buffering and so much EVF lag that you couldn't actually use all of the features in the way that you would need them in the field. They did fix that, but Canon went into an understanding that if you have this high frame rate, you need to actually be able to track your subject. And what professional photographer would want that frame rate if they couldn't track their subject? I think Canon understands that. They're more practical. I mean, Sony is amazing. We've used them for our video, but even you just switched from Sony to Canon for video because of Canon's usability. You can change settings from the back touch screen. You can scrub through um, your video footage and it's easy to do. The menus are far more intuitive and they're all touch to change things. When I'm shooting with my R5, I just press the back and I can change the ISO like that. And I don't have to program like custom menus or custom buttons or anything. It is easy to use. Okay, but I have hope for Sony there. And that's, this is one of the reasons that I've chose, chosen the Sony A1 as my primary camera instead of Canon. And Sony has is beginning to integrate their camera and smartphone business units. Sony is a huge company who also makes fine Android smartphones. And for the first time, you can really connect them and use them in novel ways. And I think it's just the tip of the iceberg. I think soon, I hope, we'll see developers from the smartphone segment start to improve and add real usability to the Sony cameras. And I think within a couple of years, we're going to see Android-based Sony Alpha cameras where we'll be able to do things like upload images directly to Google Drive or to uh, Instagram or do you know live streaming to YouTube without a separate computer and HDMI cables. I would really like to see that, but I'll believe it when I do see it. At least the potential is there with Sony. Like Canon doesn't make smartphones. They're not going to become a smartphone manufacturer. If they want to add those features, they, they have the Canon cloud service, which doesn't work great, they don't have that potential unless they want to try to partner with Apple or Google or Samsung. We probably are not interested in partnering with Canon, but Sony owns that technology. How does your Sony smartphone work? Do you like it? <laughs> I, I am an iPhone user, <laughs> but I have tested the Sony phone and it works great and it does integrate well with the camera. And maybe in the future, I, it was an Android. Okay, you got me there. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Uh, I want to get a little nerdy with business terms for a second and talk about the difference between horizontal and vertical integration. And to use uh, photographers and, as an example, if you're a wedding photographer and you want to expand horizontally, you would start doing portrait photography, pet photography, uh, fine art photography, event photography, right? Yeah. If you wanted to expand vertically, you would start uh, doing wedding catering. Maybe you'd buy a wedding venue and start renting that out. So it's the difference between expanding across similar different segments or expanding into a single segment, segment and really focusing on that. Now, both Canon and Sony do a great deal of horizontal integration. They both make cameras for us to shoot with day to day. They make still and video cameras and they make security cameras and they make specialized sensors. But Sony's vertical integration is like literally top to bottom and I think it's one of their key benefits. You can use Sony cameras to capture your video and stills. Um, they make, they're making drones now so you can get your aerial shots with all Sony equipment. They make smartphones for on-the-go video capturing. They make the microphones, something Canon doesn't really do. They make memory cards. Canon does not make memory cards. If you're doing live broadcasts, like for sports, uh, Sony makes production switching equipment. You can then go to your house and watch it on your Sony TV, like we have a Sony TV. Sony makes monitors. They have projectors, and they do the TV and film production like they actually produce Hollywood movies and stuff. It is true top to bottom vertical integration. And this is really powerful because now that they're making the movies, they can make sure that those movies are using their Sony drones and Sony cameras and Sony memory cards and Sony microphones. I worked for Microsoft for a long time and in Microsoft they did a lot of sort of vertical integration like that and you had to eat your own dog food. Sorry. You had to use like what, like a Microsoft tablet or something? Yes, I had to use a Zoom when everybody else had an iPod. <laughs> but that provided valuable insight into how it was working and you could provide that feedback and they would make the next generation better. And okay, the Zoom was not the best example of how that could work out. <laughs> that example really fell apart there. <laughs> Why did you just do that to yourself? So the Sony's like the Zoom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this really is a benefit because they can put their gear in the hands of the world's greatest professionals on their movie sets, mm -hmm. get that feedback, integrate it, and then it'll trickle down to the consumer environment. Canon really doesn't have that capability. So, so many people have to eat their own dog food, which is a great analogy because <laughs> we all want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little afraid that Airpeak is going to be the dog food. <laughs> that seems pretty scary. Airpeak is their drone that you can yeah. put their $6,000 cameras into. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you have to use it for the movie. They're crashing all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> um, okay, Tony, but I do see your point. They're setting up their business in a way where they're finding ways to use their own products within their business, like in the movie industry and stuff. And that makes a lot of sense. But I do think that Canon has more to lose because like 22% of their entire corporation is imaging sales. And that's their printers, their cameras, calculators? I was just looking at their financial reports so it's not <laughs> related, but I thought that was interesting. But 22% is a huge portion of the market. And when I look at their financial report, I see that they're really proud of their Canon R5 and R6 sales because that's a huge part of their business. and those sales are important to the future of their business. And so they're trying to convince their shareholders to stay in the business because imaging is such an important part of what they're doing. So they're pitching that things are going well. This is important to them. They can't afford to lose the imaging race. They have to be number one. It is crucial in the overall health of the business. I think that like Sony Pictures is probably blowing away their imaging sales. Yeah, I don't know because they... They bury like camera sales into a much bigger division, so you can't even break it out. No, I don't think they break it out as much. Canon is willing to break it out and show that it's 22% of their sales. Okay, well, we do know it's huge to Canon, and Canon has been number one for sales, but that is also a disadvantage for them because they are primarily concerned with competing against themselves. And you created this term, tech wrecking, where yeah. Canon is basically removing 
capabilities from their devices, from their cameras, in order to prevent cannibalization of other segments, like the R5. I really believe the early on uh, overheating capabilities were based on a timer because they didn't want to make it so good that you would buy the less expensive R5 rather than one of their more expensive cinema cameras. Yeah. And Sony doesn't have to do that. Sony doesn't hold anything back. They always give you the very best tech they can, they have. For now, because if they don't give you the very best tech that they have, you're going to go to Canon. So they're not cannibalizing their own profits because their their customers might not be giving up like their technology. Do you know what I mean? They're yeah. going to be going to Canon. So they have to put out their best stuff. Canon's already at number one. So they're going to, as I say, tech wreck their products and limit them artificially so that they're not ruining the business of like their cinema cameras and stuff. And that makes sense, even though we don't like it. So really, we are arguing different sides. I'm arguing for Canon, you're arguing for Sony, but we truly want them both to succeed. Because you don't want a monopoly, you need that competition. Otherwise, you get things like the tech wrecking, where they're limiting, you know, how long you can record 8K. So, Tony, I think we need to come together and acknowledge we need both both of these companies to survive and more, so that we get the best cameras. Yeah, competition is always healthy. And yeah. this is speaking as a guy who did work for Microsoft for a long time. That was like legally declared a monopoly. Like that was bad. That meant that technology was being held back. I think the only real danger between having the battle of these two big giants is that all the other camera companies are kind of getting squeezed out. Yeah. You know, the market share for companies like Olympus, which left the industry completely, is shrinking while that market share is going to Sony and Canon. And I'm actually worried that it might become a duopoly, like yeah. it was for so long between Canon and Nikon. I think it's we, what we really want is five or six healthy camera companies. What do you guys think? I do think that Canon will probably remain number one or they'll be going back and forth, but I'm curious to hear if you think Nikon is gonna get back in and be number one or number two, or if you think another brand is going to gain more prominence, let us know in the comments down below. And thanks to Squarespace. Set up your website for free at squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Try it out, make it beautiful, and when you love it, use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. C-H-E-L-S-E-A. <laughs> It's important to get that right. I should get one of those necklaces with my name on it. Oh, yes. That would be so fancy and so in fashion. Yes, and it would also be helpful. <laughs> Thanks, and see you next time. Bye.